What is revival? What is awakening? We use these terms to describe the move of the Spirit of God at a particular place and a particular time. The terms awakening and revival speak of rising up from a state of slumber, fatigue, and even lifelessness. Some say that what we call often revival is not supposed to be unusual, but rather what normal Christianity is supposed to look like. John chapter 11 tells the story of Lazarus, a man who was actually a friend of Jesus, who became sick and died. This was devastating to his sisters, who wondered why Jesus had not come sooner to heal their brother of his affliction. Jesus, however, was able to assure them, and not just assure, but demonstrate, that he was not only a healer of the sick, but that he was also life to the dead. Though he had been dead four days, Lazarus had no choice but to obey the Lord's command when he said, Lazarus, come forth. July 3rd, 2022, seemed like a normal Sunday at Encourager Church. Pastor Johnny Fernandez had given the sermon that day, and it was well received. In his message, he had talked about a revival coming to Houston, recalling the Azusa Street Revival in Los Angeles in the early 20th century. No one knew, however, that Johnny was about to become a physical testimony of the power of God to bring awakening and revival, in the most literal sense, to a man who needed a miracle. This is his story. It's uh, pretty wild to be sitting on this end uh, of, of the camera and to tell the story that, and I look back now, I... I, I, I'll go through sometimes my camera roll and say, God, if you only, <laughs> me, anyway, speaking of me, if you only knew what was going to happen in a few short days, it would, it would change a lot of, of what you uh, do and think and, and all of that. Last year uh, was, in 2022, was uh, probably one of my most trying uh, years. Uh, little did I know what was going to happen uh, that year. So uh, I remember, you know, just going before the Lord a lot last year and saying, God, you know, where, you know, what do you want me to, to do? You know, I'm 40, you know, at the time I was 43 years old. And I said, God, w w what are the next steps, you know? And uh, I remember having the opportunity to preach on July 3rd, of 2022 and I remember finishing the sermon and I remember saying you know um, there there was something that 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 I focused in on and it was through a documentary and it was the documentary of the last dance and so the, the Pistons were talking about what they would do when they faced Michael Jordan and they had the Jordan rules and so I remember in that sermon saying you know what is what is it that the enemy has instilled you know for f for you what what are those rules for you what what extra does he have to do to keep you from uh, your destiny because they always said the pistons said that when michael jordan took flight there was absolutely nothing they could do so they would try and do everything that they could do to keep him down hence the jordan rules in retrospect, you look you look at all of that, right? And I remember leaving, you know, the the, the service on July third, and um, and and getting on my motorcycle, and I started to drive out of the of the parking lot. And I remember I caught what I thought was a vision, but I'm still unsure of what it was. But I remember seeing a vision of of you know one of those side um, one of the signs that kind of tell you where there's an accident at or you know uh, or you know a missing person or so forth and so on. But I saw on that sign, uh, careful for a blown tire. And it just so happens that I'm, I'm uh, the, as the story goes, um, I'm traveling down I-10. Those were my, those were my final. Uh, that was that was that was my last memory before I would wake up in the hospital and just two days later. But I'm going down, and as the story goes, uh, uh, someone had blown a tire, and I was trying to avoid running tires, and I and I was uh, apparently hit by this uh, by this driver. And so, um, story goes that um, 
phone calls were being made to 911 saying, hey, we're seeing someone just flew over my car. <laughs> and um, I'm told that I was, I had broken five ribs and I had broken a, um, I had broken my shoulder and that I had a brain bleed. And so because of the brain bleed, I was having to be life lighted from uh, the Katy Freeway here at Eldridge all the way to the medical center. So I'm life lighted to the medical center at Herman. I, I, my, my next thoughts were, or my next memory was, I woke up uh, to a nurse that is standing right in front of me and I had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> And so I said to the lady, I said, look, I got to go to the bathroom. <laughs> and she said, Mr. Fernandez, I know you feel that way, but you're not going to be able to get up right now. And so she says, we've taken care of, of that, right? And so uh, she says um, she says to me, you've been in a terrible accident. So I, I, I'm going through, uh, you know, all of that in, in my memory, right? And so as I'm told, I was, I was given a 24-hour period of when I first got to the hospital on Sunday. This was a Sunday that this happened, remember? And uh, they said, look, the next 24 hours are going to be crucial for him. We don't know if he'll survive. And so immediately, people, uh, you know, intercessors began to pray, pastors began to pray, and people were, were praying from all over the city. We were getting uh, hits. I'd later read through our Facebook post that Pastor Fernando had posted what had happened, and uh, there were uh, over a hundred uh, replies, which I'm humbled by, of just people, you know, uh, saying, we're praying, we're praying, and, and people, uh, pastors from all over the city were we're contacting saying, hey, we want to let, let you know that we're praying for Johnny. The 24-hour period had passed and something just miraculously happened. The neurologist was saying, look, we've seen a, uh, a, a, a huge turnaround. I was in trauma one. Uh, I was flown in and I was in probably the highest level of, of trauma in the hospital and with a 24-hour period to live. Now, I've been doing hospital visits for 21 years, and um, I'm just saying uh, it wasn't short of a, of a miracle. I mean, it was, it was um, in, in a situation like these where I have visited uh, people in these types of situations before and, and types that just didn't make it. To see how God rushed in, um, I, I, was, I was in awe after I left the hospital because I had left the hospital just four days after I went in, which shouldn't have happened unless it were a miracle. So we began to see God move in my life, and I, I started saying to the Lord, Lord, you woke me up. You brought me out of this for such a time as this. I believe it with all of my heart. And I began to see this turn right uh, shortly after that in my life, yeah, but I began to feel like there was happening a shift that was going to be happening in, in, in the body of Christ also. And I began to, we began to uh, experience, um, you know, words were, where the Holy Spirit was moving in, in certain places. And, and I just began to just say, God, did you let me live? for these times, because I've always felt that Houston was going to have a great revival pop out of this city that four walls weren't going to contain, and I felt like it was going to be a city-wide move where people would be coming and standing in front of a stage and just worshiping God for 21 years. I felt that. I believed God for those moments. And I believe that we started to we were starting to see those even even now with outbreaks of of, of the presence of God even in our services. I remember uh, just just some time ago uh, after uh, coming out of this kind of what I felt like was an awakening for me a personal revival, being that I came out of this crazy uh, situation feeling like. Okay, there's obviously a destiny on my life. I'm alive for I'm alive for greater things. 
And uh, I remember talking to a, a lady just this past week, and she said, Pastor Johnny, I remember, I remember seeing you just a few weeks ago when you, when you preached earlier this year. I saw you coming through a part of the church that I've never seen you walk through before. And I thought that that was significant, particularly for my case, because I felt like I'm, I was going to be, I felt like God was calling me to, to a different, um, I don't know, uh, just a, I, I, I feel like God was gonna, uh, I was gonna be uh, ministering differently. You know, there was just, I don't know, I just felt like a huge, just a different anointing over my life at this point. So she said, I heard like these trumpets sounding in the parking lot. And I said, is there, is there a, is, is, is there outside audio that's played out here? And um, to which we don't. She said, when she heard me preach, she said, Pastor Johnny, I felt like God said, that you lived through those moments because you were going to be a trumpet piece for the kingdom of God. So I look at all of this and I think, you know, um, how amazing the grace of God, the love of God has been. And at every opportunity that I had to go lay hands on someone that needed healing, I made sure to do that. And I wanna say to you also, you may be in some different or dark times in your life. You may be in a point of your life where you feel, I need a miracle. I'm here to tell you that the God of hope is for you. And I'm believing God to release those miracles over you. I'm believing for extraordinary, for the extraordinary to be unleashed in a way that we have not seen before. I believe we're going to start seeing what Joel 2 prophesied. I believe we're going to see our sons and our daughters prophesy, our old men dream dreams. I believe that we're gonna see the glory of God in ways that we've not seen before. Let's get ready to see God do amazing, amazing things. To where God takes you from a place where you were feeling destitute or you were feeling low and, and you weren't going to make it to just four days later leaving a hospital in a different place in a different spiritual, uh, uh, in a different spiritual place, even in a great, great awakening.